All right. Now, as you can see, uh, the solder paste has turned very shiny, and it's well uh, adhesed to all the different pins. Uh, we also have managed to not have any bridges, which would be a bit of the solder connecting to pins, so that's good. If you have one of those, you're going to need to make that not a, not a bridged connection anymore. So now, what we're ready to do is we're ready to put solder paste on the other side. So we can use the same cardboard box, and now that these pieces are on here, it should push the board about up flush with, with the box if you've, you know, chosen a good thickness or what have you. Um, the reason why we did that first side first, that we did, is because there is a both through hole and surface mount piece there, this one specifically, that kind of juts out over the side, so we're going to save that for later. So now we've got this next stencil for the bottom side that we're going to tape into place carefully. Make sure that you can see the silver of the contact pads well through the uh, small holes. Like so. And now for more solder paste. Now you want the uh, stencil to be as flush with the board as possible while you're applying it because that will help keep it from the paste from kind of going out to the sides or any of those other bad things. By using a sort of uh, paint scraper like this, it's easy to kind of apply and then pull it back off again, kind of, or whatever this method is that I'm doing here. It's useful, it's helpful, it's nice. All right, so that looks like it's pretty well in there. So we can go ahead and pull it off again. Also want to be careful when you're pulling this off so that you don't uh, use the holes themselves to kind of smear the paste around. Oh. All right, looks like that's good. So it's time to continue putting pieces on. Starting with this nice big one here, which needs to have full contact with each of these four pads here, as well as these parts fitting through the provided holes. Like that. It kind of keeps itself in place, but you know, it would be easy to move a big piece like that around a bit. All right, now to put on the rest of the resistors and capacitors. All right, now that all of the rest of the surface mount parts are on there, we are ready to bake it a second time. Now, as you recall, the other side is already stuffed, which means that, well, the pieces are rather solidly on there right now, once we put it into the oven, they will in fact reflow at the same point that this, uh, that the, this side you know, becomes liquid. So, to keep that from being a problem, instead of laying it straight into the oven here where they have these bars, we're going to use two spacers to just push it up a little bit. Now I'm using uh, some spare car uh, copper circuit board, but anything that's oven safe should be fine here. So what you're going to want to do is take your board very carefully and go ahead and set it in such a way that it's being propped up by these two spacers. Ooh actually make sure they're close enough together to, for that to work. Also, this large piece that's surface mount is fairly stable, but you don't want to, you know, jiggle it around too much or make it support the weight. So now we've gotten that in there and that should be just fine. Now, as you can see, the parts un are unsupported underneath, which means that when it reflows, they will stick to the board due to surface tension and everything should be fine and dandy. 
We don't want them to be actually laying against something because when it reflows, they could shift to the side and be no longer where they are supposed to be. So now we're going to go ahead and turn this on. And this time, we'll try to see if we can actually watch the reflow purpose happen, process happen. Oh, there it starts to go, see? And you can see how it's all turning silver and kind of adhesing to the sides of the parts. Now we want to leave it in there for a little while so that it has time for all of the different uh, spots to get warm enough. We'll give it another 30 seconds or so. That's probably good. Yeah, I think that should be. We'll go ahead and turn that off. I love the dinging sound. And let that cool off a little bit. All right, now once it's cooled off enough that you are confident that you aren't going to mess anything up, you can go ahead and grab that out of there. Now if we want to take a nice close look, we can see that all of the resistors and capacitors are fully on there. We want to make sure that this piece here has full contact on all four of its leads, which it looks like it does, but I'm not entirely thrilled with those, so I might touch those up a little bit. And now if we want to look at the other side, we can see that thanks to our separators, none of these parts have shifted or moved around they stayed entirely where they were supposed to. All right, so let's put on the through hole parts and solder up those that are left. Now for this, you're gonna need a soldering iron and some solder uh, wire of thickness doesn't matter a whole lot, but something that's convenient. So let's see, first, I'm going to make sure that these are firmly in. Because if you see how it's a kind of a dull gray color here, that means that these did not actually reflow. We didn't leave it hot for quite long enough. But for these specifically, it's quite easy to fix that. As you can see, it just kind of very easily flows right up onto the pad where we want it. So this one is pretty easy to take care of. That's not where I wanted that. Excellent. All right. Now the through hole part that we have is right here. And if you look at the uh, silk screen layout here, you'll see that it actually gives you space to lay it over on its side so it doesn't uh, jut up too much. So carefully to not stab them or anything, you're going to want to bend the leads at about a 90 degree angle and then fit them through these two holes here so that your part lies flush with the board. All right, then we can set that on the side to secure and solder from this angle. We're also going to want to solder these three through hole pins from this larger piece. OK, 
get that. Alright, so let's see, we can cut those off, and what do we have left? We have the um, two small wheels here that we want to end up looking like this. Now there are specific instructions how to do this on the website, which will also be provided but I will do it now in demonstration. All right, now you're gonna to wanna to cut off the excess leads here and save one of them because we're also going to need to ground the case on the other side. So get those off. better if you heat up the case of the crystal. It's actually, it's done, isn't it? I don't know if you got it soldered on the crystal side. Maybe not. It should flow when it's, yeah, there, that's beautiful. And I want to make sure that I get the... You can do it on the other side. Yeah. this one? Careful. All right, next is time to make the transformer and the inductor. You should have supplied in your kit um, these two pieces as well as the plastic underneath and a length of wire. Now for the transformer first we are going to measure out approximately 12 inches. The length isn't entirely important, it's the number of turns that are important, so we can guess something in this area and then we will fold it in half because it is a bifiler? Bifiler wound. Yeah. Bifiler. So you should have about six inches for each half and go ahead and twist them together a little bit so that they stay well together. All right, once those are fairly well together, you're going to want to take one of these and wrap the wire around for four turns precisely. So, God. One. It's actually the number of times you go through the center. Okay, so this is two then. And four. So now you have two fairly long leads, and these are insulated, so before we solder them into the board, we're going to need to go and sand them down a little bit. The inside is actually exposed. All right, and now for the second part, we're going to take about six inches and do eight turns with that six inches. <laughs> 